Hi, and welcome to For Real Life. I'm Jochem Hill. This podcast is intended to use biblical truth for real life issues. The Bible talks about many of life's questions, struggles, hopes, and fears. It's a book that was written many years ago, but is definitely applicable to the here and now. It's not just stories and theories, it's for real life. Idols and idol worship is a big deal in the Bible. It's mentioned hundreds of times. From the beginning in the first book, Genesis, all the way through to the last book, Revelation, the Bible mentions idols. In the Old Testament, Israel was told to not worship idols, for instance. It's right up there in the Ten Commandments. It was really important to God. We also see it mentioned regularly in the New Testament in letters from Paul, for instance. Now, if the Bible is so relevant today, which I believe it is, Uh, Why is this mentioned so often? Why do you and I need to know about idols? Now, there's two types of idols that I can think of. First, we have the idols in the form of little statues. Uh, People might burn a candle or some incense or something uh, along with that statue. Secondly, maybe a more modern version of an idol, we have people that we idolize. So pop stars like actors, singers, uh, or people like sports players. But recently, a friend of mine, Steve McKay, he spoke about idols and mentioned something really interesting. He spoke about idols of the heart. And so to talk a little bit more about this, I asked Steve to join me. Okay, thanks for joining me, Steve. It seems like it's been months since I've seen you. It has been months, so maybe that's why. Yeah, you're welcome. Glad to be on the show. All right, so I uh, was had a question for you about idols of the heart. We, uh, you spoke about this last time. I'm interested to hear a little bit more. Uh, what are idols from the heart and where does that idea come from? Yeah, so uh, maybe just before I explain that, I think uh, when you look through the Bible and you see idolatry come up over and over and over again, it's kind of weird and seems a little bit um, removed from us because today we don't exactly have these wooden or stone or precious metal idols typically in North America that are prevalent as part of people's religions um, as much and a big focus on it. However, um, when you read what God responds uh, to idolatry with, it's huge amounts of anger, and he seems sounds very frustrated with it. Uh, he, he goes so far as to make commands ahead of time. And so, if this is so important, like, why is that in the Bible? And it seems odd to us. So, where it gets really relevant is understanding why God cares so much about idolatry, because really it goes back to what he talks about in his commandments, in uh, like in Deuteronomy, for example. Actually, this is one of the commandments that Jesus says is like the first commandment. That's in Deuteronomy 6, verse 5. He says, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your strength. And God wants our whole heart. And so when we read about idolatry over in Ezekiel chapter 14, this is where it gets really personal and real. God says to Ezekiel, he says, Son of man, these men have set up their idols in their hearts and put before them that which causes them to stumble into iniquity. Should I let myself be inquired at all by them? Uh, And he goes on in verse 5, he says, um, he wants them to turn so he can seize the house of Israel by their heart because they're all estranged from me by their idols. So really, God's issue isn't about the stone so much as what's happening in their hearts and how they're giving their hearts away to something that's not him. Okay, so if that's how it was relevant for, I guess, the children of Israel and for the people in the Bible, how is this relevant to us today then? Like to you and me, why does this matter to you and me? Yeah, and I think that's the the, the question we need to ask. Um, And it's really the same issue that they had back then. In in 1 John chapter 2, uh, John writes, uh, don't love the world, verse 15, or the things in the world. If anyone loves the world, the love of the Father is not in him. For all that is in the world, the lust of the eyes, the lust of uh, the flesh and the pride of life is not of the Father, but it's of the world and the world is passing away. But he who does the will of God abides forever. So really, I think that uh, John summarizes all of the issues of our hearts that we have. And, and these issues like, show up in Genesis 3 from, from the beginning of the Bible where we read about Adam, Adam and Eve all the way down to today. We have the same issues. And really, those idols are characterized in those three things, the lust of the eyes, the lust of the flesh, and the pride of life. So uh, what does that mean for us today, though? So we could look at you know the lust of the flesh as pleasure, different types of pleasure. We could look at um, 
the lust of the eyes as things that we want or things that we desire. Um, and the pride of life as things like status or esteem from other people. So if you look at the Bible um, about Israel's issues with idolatry, there's three kind of indicators for what um, indicates if something is an idol of your heart. A lot of people get stuck on the, um, the sort of external things of what an idol might be. Um, I don't know, some people might think like, oh, a car is an idol or a TV is an idol for me. But it really goes deeper and that's what's really important, right? What's really in the heart. So three indicators I would think, I would say, based on uh, what God says in the Bible is, one, if you're willing to sin to get something, or if you're willing to sin if you don't get it, then that's an idol of your heart. So for example, I would say ease is a common idol of people's hearts, especially if you have kids. So let's say that you're, you've worked hard all day and you're lying on the couch and uh, the kids are asking you for things and bugging you for things and they don't stop. They want you to play with them. And then uh, you, you lash out in anger at them. That's an indicator that ease is what you desire more and you're willing to sin by lashing out in anger to get it. Right. Uh, or alternatively, you know, if you don't get something that you wanted and you're willing to sin... Uh, because you don't get it, also that's an indicator, ooh, that's the idol of my heart, whether it's an ease or some type of pleasure. In Ezekiel, it says, that which causes you to stumble into sin. And some des- a lot of our desires are, are not bad. They're not, that's not a problem, but it's when we stumble into sin because of them. Right. So go back to the comment you made earlier uh, that God reacts with real anger to the issues with idolatry. So what would that look like in our lives? Like, what are, is that still something that God would be really angry about? Like, how, how would ease lead to anger with God? Yeah, that's a great question. So um, I, I think if I look at my the third, the third point, that really draws it out. So the third indicator is that you're willing to sacrifice something of value. And you can see that throughout the Bible, uh, a number of times they go serving other idols, uh, Chemosh or Chemosh in particular. That's one where um, King Ahaz of Judah sacrificed his own children to that idol. And I think the message right. for us there is, if you're willing to sacrifice something of value for a desire you have, then that t- indicates that it's an idol of your heart. So for example, if the idol of your our heart is status at work or at school or wherever we're at, and we're willing to deny Jesus, so that people yeah. will, will esteem us highly, that's a really good indicator that status is an idol of our heart. So us giving into the desires and pleasures of, or the desires that we have in our heart is the thing that makes God so angry that we totally live and serve and worship those desires rather than deny those desires and give our hearts to God and God will satisfy the desires of our heart. It's twofold almost as well, right? There's the one side of it is the the consequence, right? So uh, if we are if we're willing to sacrifice things or willing to sin to do things, the outworking of that is not going to be good for us in the long run, uh, but also not for our loved ones around us. Probably, uh, maybe we're willing to sacrifice family time, or maybe we're even willing to sacrifice family for whatever desire we have. Uh, and, and so it almost shows, well, it definitely shows God's care for us that, hey, this is for your best interest to not go down this road. But it's also something that really dishonors him and, and, and you know, takes you away from, from Jesus, who is ultimately going to be king in this world, right? So there's that twofold aspect, maybe that, A, it's bad for us and it shows God's love, but also it shows that we don't give God and Jesus the, the respect that they are worthy of? Absolutely. Yeah, that, that's, that's exactly it. And I think if you look, uh, start looking and evaluating what's happening in your heart when you're in moments of stress and moments of frustration, and how are you acting and what is that telling you about what's happening in your heart and what you're really desiring, then that's the place where you can start to change and start to actually give your heart to God. So catch yourself and notice, I'm really stressed out right now and I'm frustrated and I desire whatever that desire is, but I'm going to replace that desire with something that God wants and respond in a much right. better way. And to slowly give our hearts to God instead of just satisfying it for ourselves. And I think when you start looking at the, the Bible with that, with that lens of what idolatry is, 
it really makes it personal, deeply personal, and how much of an affront it is to God because, you know, we are espoused to, uh, as the bride of Christ to, to Jesus. Um, and when yes. we give our heart away, how does he feel? And God makes that abundantly clear throughout the Bible. Absolutely. That's great. Thanks so much, Steve. I think those are helpful to finish on a, uh, on a positive note there and a practical outworking. So uh, thanks so much. Great talking to you. Hey, too. Welcome. So idols are much more than just items carved out of stone or wood or precious metals. These are things that can lead you away from God, uh, but also go further and cause you to sin against him. And so as you read through the Bible and you come across idols and different passages, just stop and wonder why it talks about idols there. Because most likely there's a lesson to learn there for you. Not necessarily about the person or the people that are involved with the idol, but a lesson for you and your own relationship with God our Father. Thank you for listening to For Real Life in the WCF Podcast Network. I'm Levi, and I'm a co-host on a show called A Little Faith, where we explore faith breakdowns and buildups with different people who have very powerful stories to tell. We have another show where Tom and Naomi are exploring how we interact in our ecclesial relationships, and it's called From the Platform. It's a very in-depth series that is incredibly helpful for understanding and developing compassion and better listening practices. You can find both of those wherever you get your podcasts or our website, wcfoundation.org slash podcasts. Lastly, did you know that WCF assists in support and resettlement for dozens of political refugees a year? Please consider supporting our efforts with donating on our website, wcfoundation.org. Have a great week.